I primarily work in graphite and um, sharp home ink. So uh, obviously my work is very drawing based. And you know the primary themes that I really think about um, are kind of mining of history, culture, and mythology. You know, especially those that exist between East and West. So my work takes a lot of formats, but generally I consider myself to be a two-dimensional installation artist. And the imagery in these cards here, uh, where does that come from? Well, I've been always interested in the idea of the trading card or the collectible, uh, the, the miniature, the tradition of exquisite little drawings. And I use this to this format to really organize my thoughts. Um, when I was thinking about ways to develop ideas and themes, um, I used to be a musician, and one, uh, one tool they used to kind of develop ideas is the theme and variations, whether that be in jazz or classical. And the idea that like jazz musicians that I esteem, like Charlie Parker, great horn player, um, he was able to take a little snippet of popular music and turn it into like this endless variation of you know brilliance and techno virtuosity. So I thought that you know for me to uh, start investigating icons and motifs that I'm interested in, kind of create this collection of images and research around uh, around it. Really, really was of interest to me. So I came up with the skull and crossbones just because it's such. Uh, a ubiquitous symbol. You know, you see it anywhere from poison bottles to pirate flags, and it has such a rich and myriad history. So, I got really excited about that, and I started doing research. And um, this is these are little notations. These are kind of riffs on the theme. And for me, this was a really good step in uh, the direction I wanted my work to take because I was able to come up with this theme and create a new kind of galaxy of historical references with what it is I was interested in. Your work varies a lot in scale, so can you tell me about working on these very small, very intimate little drawings versus working on the banners or the large screen printed piece that you have behind you? Well, first of all, you know, beyond any of this historical context, I'm interested in making objects of beauty or, or something intriguing that kind of draws the eye in. And, and as an artist, I found that the most successful methods to do that are severe shifts in scale. Um, you know, these little cards are very small universes unto themselves. They contain a lot of little snippets of history, both in size and in concept. So, you know, when you when you take something as delicate and as intimate in scale as these drawings, and you put them next to something as expansive as these scrolls here, it becomes more about really uh, unexpected shifts in scale that kind of intrigue and entice the eye. So it really is about scale and, and kind of drawing your eyes in, in, in unexpected ways that, that uh, kind of uh, make you want to come in for further investigation. And you talked, when we were just talking casually earlier, you talked about the work in this show being transitional. So, where do you see your work going from here? How has it evolved? Well, uh, I, I mean, what I meant by transitional is that this is kind of uh, 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 eclectic retrospective of sorts. A lot of these works span the last four or five years, for example. This, this large tapestry was produced in 2006 for a public commission, and, and um, you know, it always makes for uh, uh, an interesting way to engage the installation space. Um, and so when I'm working with older works like this, and I'm looking at the new works, um, they're obviously connected. They, they have elements of my own personal cultural history, there's political history, there's cosmic history. You know, this piece is about the creation of the universe at the hands of the Chinese architect, you know, Kang, who is the creator of the mythology that, that we know as China today. So, you know, the themes that run through my work are very similar, but the way I'm addressing them is different. So, um, seeing all the work together, 
they operate in kind of an uneasy way because you know there are different formats, different ideas. But I am very pleased that when you look at the work, there is an element of a theatrical, of the vaudeville, of the transient entertainer that comes into town, throws up his wares in a matter of a couple of days, and it becomes something else. It becomes a spectacle. And I'm really about that. Um, you know, I like the idea where where I appear suddenly and things happen. And and you know, producing work like this takes a long time. And so, you know, I finally at the point in my career where I can take works from different periods and see them together, and it always makes for an interesting experience for me as an artist. So. One of the other things when you and I were just chit-chatting earlier is we talked about how, you know, your pieces work differently in different spaces. So I was just going to ask how, how you feel the work functions in this space, just because of what it is, and if you thought about that when you were planning the show, if you picked pieces specifically for this gallery that you might not have shown somewhere else, or if you maybe edited something out that you would have otherwise shown? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I was really drawn to this space in particular. You know, I apply for so many shows, and, and when the people at Red Reviews were in contact with me, um, I did some research and looked at some images online, and and I've always felt that um, that description of my work that I just talked about, this kind of um, unveiling of the spectacle or, or the carnival or, or whatever you want to call it, I think that that suits itself well to like a converted industrial space, something that had a history of its own that's been interrupted or changed. You know, I mean, this space in particular is quite nice because you can tell that it has bones, it has a history in the industrial age where things were produced and people sweated here. And my work is about sweating too, it's about obsession, and it's about labor too. And so I think that the tone of the work that I make really is well suited to the tone of the building. And I've shown a lot in reclaimed industrial spaces like that. And when you look at the floors and they have a patina of human uh, passage of human, the human footprint, and you look around and see these walls and they've been reclaimed and there's these interruptions of this, this, this wonderful sterile white space, I think that makes for a history of its own that I like to layer my on top of. And then I was just curious about the screen print in the back, just how you did that. I mean, just the physical process, was that just a single screen that you burned? Was it multiple well, screens that well, you layered? The process, the process of working this large is funny. I can talk about the production of both of these because it really is similar. Um, part of, a, a facet of the production of my work is printmaking in its various permutations. But I consider myself uh, a draftsman primarily. That's, that's, that's the tool. That's the preferred mode of discourse in art production for me. But for these two pieces, uh, especially since you asked about the Gold Mountain, it started out with a drawing. It came up with an idea. And, and these large pieces generally are about um, iconic situations or, uh, or symbols or places or things that have cross-cultural significance, whether it be the star and the explosion, or whether it be the, the mountain with the radiating tip. These are all very cosmic icons that we respond to, I think. And I think that they open, it, they open the viewer up for discussion, you know, or, or at least internally or externally. We, we think about these symbols, and that could be biblical um, in terms of Western iconography, where Moses was at the top of the mountain to receive wisdom from God. Um, or it could be um, Gold Mountain, which is uh, an immigration in Chinese uh, history. So, you know, these, these formats that they take generally um, are larger than life, um, and they all start with drawing. Then I figure out a way from that small drawing to make them as visually active as in a large scale. All right, well, thank you very much. No problem.